This handsome chap right here is James Gilray. He was a British caricaturist and printmaker known as the father of the political cartoon for his political and social satires. His prints exposed corruption and moral failings, but also mocked things like greed and lust. The political cartoon was established in the late 18th century in England and was said to be pioneered by Gilray. Predating this, you have William Hogarth, who was beginning to combine social criticism with artistic scenes. Hogarth was of great inspiration to Gilray. He, of course, played a role in establishing the beginnings of the political cartoon, but after taking a look at some more of Hogarth's work, you can certainly see a likeness. Maybe more in composition rather than portraiture, as Gilray's addition of caricature really makes them distinguishable. Gilray's legacy inspired many artists that followed, in particular George Cruikshank, and it's not hard to see the familiarities when looking at his work. Cruikshank, together with Hogarth and Gilray, formed the big three of 18th century political cartooning. Baby Gilray was born in Chelsea in 1756 and during the early years of his childhood was sent to a Moravian boarding school, which is one of the oldest Protestant religious groups in the world. It was a rather harsh and repressive institution and I think this part of his upbringing can account for the allusions to the Bible in his work and also why normative figures don't feature in his prints. You'd have to be guilty of something to be at the end of Gilray's ridicule. Having always shown a skill for drawing, Gilray became an apprentice to an engraver at the age of just 14. And despite his talent, he found it, well, boring. So that then led to another influential event in his early life when he traveled with a theater group and is probably why a lot of his prints refer to plays, whether that be setting the satire up as a scene on stage or his many references to Shakespeare. Gilray's prints were all created using forms of intaglio. Like most artists, he would have started with a rough sketch before transferring it to a copper metal plate ready to be printed. The marks on the plate can be created in a variety of ways, which included engraving, dry point, stipple engraving, aquatint, and Gilray's most used method, which was etching, although he would often combine several techniques into one print. His caricatures can be split into political and social satires. His most common victims included George III, William Pitt the Younger, Charles James Fox, Edmund Burke, Thomas Paine and Napoleon. As well as making the most of the rivalry between the political parties, the royal family, French Revolution and Napoleonic Wars were also great sources of inspiration. Another figure that makes frequent appearances in Gilray's work is John Ball, a personification of the UK. The Plum Pudding in Danger is one of the most celebrated political cartoons of all time and has been plagiarised and reimagined in countless ways ever since. It depicts William Pitt sat across from Napoleon carving up the world between them. Pitt is using a three-pronged fork like a trident that is planted in the Atlantic Ocean, symbolic of Britain's desire for global naval supremacy. Meanwhile, the intensely animated Napoleon is seen digging into Europe, drawn very short in height. Fun fact, the myth that Napoleon was incredibly small is largely attributed to Gilray. Aside from this, the print is embellished with lots of smaller details like the royal arms and imperial crown on the gold plates and the corresponding decor on their chairs. The caption reads, the great globe itself and all which it inherit is too small to satisfy such insatiable appetites, which I think just sums it up. I think Gilray was suggesting that these two fierce empires are incapable of sharing and that it would inevitably end in conflict, mocking the idea that they could ever work peacefully together. Unfortunately, the end of Gilray's life became quite bitter. His eyesight began to deteriorate in 1806, which meant he was unable to work to his previous standards. And this led to depression, alcoholism and a failed suicide attempt where he threw himself from the attic window of his publisher's print shop. Lapsing into insanity, Hannah Humphrey, his publisher, then cared for him until his death in 1815. Gilray's prominence made him both sought after and feared and is now revered by many as the most influential political caricaturist of all time. An example of a modern day influence is the British satirical puppet show Spitting Image, first broadcast in 1984, but the show's recently returned, um, I think last month. 
Gilray was even made into a puppet for the show. And when I was looking it up, I actually found a caricature of Margaret Thatcher that clearly took inspiration from Gilray's plum pudding print. Typically, Gilray's art is not something I would usually be interested in. His style doesn't particularly inspire me. You know, it's quite unattractive, in my opinion, which I know is a testament to the exaggeration involved in caricature, but it's just not my cup of tea. As well as that, the content matter isn't something that captures me either. I'm not massively into history or politics, and in order to appreciate satire, you do need to have a level of understanding of that time period. And if I'm being perfectly honest, even after all my research, there are still some pieces uh, that I don't fully understand. Although he did have over a thousand prints, so maybe that's understandable. Nevertheless, he was quite a fascinating man and is clearly a great inspiration to many, even today. And though I may not have researched him in such depth in my own time, I've definitely grown to enjoy his humour and his prints. Well, most of his prints. For my reflective response, I made a start in my sketchbook by looking more into Gilray's style and technique. Due to self-isolation and time limitations, I haven't been able to try my hand at etching, so instead I replicated the cross-hatching and stippling method seen in his prints using fine liner pens. Here's a copy of a portrait of Gilray by Charles Turner, and I also did a slightly caricatured self-portrait of myself in pen and watercolour with close reference to a self-portrait Gilray did in 1800. I then moved on to the art of caricature. I watched some YouTube videos and a documentary about the art form to get a better idea of how to tackle it. And although I am yet to do my final reflective piece, I know I want it to be current and political, just like Gilray's prints were, so I decided to practice caricaturing Trump and Bojo. By the time I'd finished, I had a headache, and I genuinely think it was because I had to stare at their faces for an hour or two. What I'll work on next is thumbnailing some final piece ideas, which will probably be some form of political cartoon, I know, an absolute shock, and I guess you're just going to have to wait and see. Thanks for listening!